All right, back in Ephesians 4, I hope you're not getting weary going through this book. I think God opens up things to us each and every time we go through it. And uh, I know we're taking a little time, but I tell you, as we, we look at these scriptures and allow God to speak to our hearts, He does just that. And I hope you'll find yourself uh, studying along and going ahead. Of course, the rate we're going, I mean, I guess you could read it, I don't know, 20 times. <laughs> I know we're taking a little time going through it, but let's look this morning. We, we finished up uh, two weeks ago in our study, really on verse 28. We kind of got bogged up there a little bit. But it said, Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now remember, we talked about how the Christian walk ought to be. He said in verse 30, this main part we'll pick up with today, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be you kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Now, these scriptures, as we read through them, as we really get into them and allow God to speak to our hearts, it'll do some conviction on the child of God. Remember, we're talking about how our walk should be. And verse 30 says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. You know, it's possible for us to do just that as believers. Now, the God of the universe, the God of creation, lives in, inside each and every believer. And it's very possible for us to constrain Him. We are our biggest enemy. Hey, man, we're the ones that don't accomplish what we can accomplish and what God wants to accomplish through us. Because we grieve Him. Our flesh is in the way. Our motives are in the way. Our desires are in the way. The things we want and we want to possess, our possessions are in the way. But grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Of course, grieve means to make sorrowful, uh, to affect with sadness, to throw into sorrow, to make one uneasy or to distress. And I must say, it is possible to do everything we're fixing to read and go over here in just a minute to the Holy One of Israel, to the one that lives inside of us. It's very possible. Now, God gives lots of relations in the Scripture about how, as a matter of fact, we're going to get into it as we get into the next chapter on in a few weeks, but how it gets into parenting. It gets into husband and wife relationship. The whole thing is about relationships. And uh, as we read through the Word of God and we go through this book especially, God is wanting to work on our relationship to Him. God has done so much. God has done more on His behalf than we could ever imagine. God has come to where we are. God has became sin for us. God has done so much. And He wants us to have that relationship he wants us to walk in victory, not in defeat. Too many times we walk in defeat. We let ourselves get in the way of what God is wanting to do in our lives. And it is possible to grieve the Holy Spirit of God. So as we look at the relationship and the fellowship, basically, the relationship is something that can't be changed. I mean, it doesn't matter. I can change anything. It doesn't matter. I, my, my dad's blood's in me, even though he's not here anymore. His blood is still in me. If they went back and took DNA from 30 years ago and took it right now, it'd be the same. Amen. His blood's in me. The relationship I can't do anything about. The fellowship is what we hinder in our walk with God. And a fellowship with one with another, by the way, as a child of God. But a good example that uh, older par parents of older kids uh, can come away with, you, you just got young ones right now, uh, this ain't going to affect you too much, but as I, once it's got older ones, you're going to say amen through a lot of this that I'm missing to talk yeah. about this morning. Those times are coming. Now, it's all good. 
I'm just going to go on and say it up front. But there are times as they get older, they're going to grieve. You know, we talk about the terrible twos. And I remember when Leslie was two and three, and it just drove me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My goodness, I see with the older people, with older parents, I mean, older kids are just laughing because the terrible twos ain't nothing. <laughs> this old teens, this those years when they get on up in the age. Uh -huh. I mean, that's when it really breaks your heart. Some of the things that it says and done, <coughs> actions that take place. So, a good example of the grieving that we can do now. Everything I'm going to read and apply to, I want you to spin it if you will. I know Bill O'Reilly talked about the no spin zone, but let's spin it and put it as applicable to the Spirit of God as in our life. But as those of us who have older children, we can relate to this very well. When that child whom you have raised uh, a certain way, yep, we're working good on it. Praise the Lord, brother. All right, we, uh, we as just Larry said, my sound's working good. It's all good. That's part of it. One of these days, I want somebody else to run this thing so I can just get up here and do it, but it's all good. Anyway, what we can relate to is a lot. When we raise a child a certain way, and they get out on their own, or we give them some rope, and that's what you got to do as they get older. You know what? You just got to sort of let them uh, go ahead and do that if you want to do it. I'm telling you, you ain't going to want to like the results of it, but if you want to go ahead and do it, my hands are off of you. You go ahead and do it. Same way God does with us. God uh, raises us up as children of God. Now, when we first get saved, you know, we're vulnerable. We're just as vulnerable as a little baby. We got to be led. We got to be uh, taught things. And as we get older, you know, we get a little more, a little more cocky, if you will, a little more brave. Want to take a? We give up. God gives us an inch. We want to take a mile. Give That's just exactly the way our kids do, and that's the way. We all can do. Now, we're all guilty of these things, but you give them that little bit, and they get out and they make their own decisions. And you in love give them that little bit of rope and hope to goodness they don't hang themselves with it. Amen? <laughs> and, and, and you look back and you think, and, and they, you look at this, and as they do things and, and say things and make decisions, it's like, you know what? You wasn't raised that way. I, I can... Plenty of people can come to mind right now. Uh, there's people that I know that raise their kids different, and they're not living nothing like they was raised here in this church. Now, I've been here 18 years, I guess, 17, 18 years. I've seen them. I've seen them come from when they was little toddlers here. Now they got they got kids, and they're just not living like they was raised. I know some of the households that they was raised in. You just don't ever know. All you can do. And I challenge you with young kids is keep them on a straight and narrow path and, and love them and be an example in front of them. And that is all you can do. Amen. So as we go on and we look at this, talking about things like this, well, as, as they get older and they make some of the choices they make, uh, some of them make choices that's going to just break your heart. All kind of emotions is going to rise up within you. There's going to be heartache. There's going to be anger. All those things are going to come up. And we're talking about grieving here now. And I'm giving you some examples. So these emotions will come up. Tears will then follow those emotions. Whether they realize it or not, they have grieved you. Have you ever been, uh, have your child say something to you and not only did it make you angry, but man, it just grieved you. Cannot believe that come out of your mouth. I can't believe you made that kind of decision. Disappointment can come in. We do all of these things, folks, to the Spirit of God when we grieve Him. And that's what we're talking about here. So uh, we know the fellowship can be broken, but the relationship can never change. And thank God for that. I've known and still known some parents today that they're losing years off of their lives because of the grief over decisions their children have made and continue to make. They walk day to day in distress, in grieving. I know some parents whose kids are just out in the world and they're on drugs and 
They're in all kind of relationships. The whole world has fell apart. And, and they, they look at mom and they look at dad and wonder why their lives ain't turned out like that. It's all about the decisions we make. Amen. The decisions are what changes, what chooses us. The decisions we make, the choices we make, chooses our destination. That's right. Now, they can uh, grieve us and we can grieve God and we can make decisions that God has better plans for us, but we make some decisions and choices that grieve Him, that hinders His work in our lives. Now, I'm just going to list a few here, and we'll walk down uh, uh, some social issues, if you will. And I will go through them because it's a part of life. You say, I, don't, I didn't come here to hear that. Well, I'm sorry, it's part of life. You're going to deal with it when you walk out of this door. The You're truth right. needs to be told even from behind a pulpit. So, some social issues you, that things may grieve you. You have taught them what the Bible teaches, that God has said that no man should lie with a man the same as he lies with a woman, that God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality and did it for an example to us. All three of those examples I just give you all come from the Scripture. The Scripture's to back it up. And you send them off to school and you send them off to college then it's been accepted by the world. It's been pushed down our throats on the television. And all the political leaders say, if you don't do this, then you're judgmental, you're racist, you're a bigot, you name it. You fall into that category. You are going to be branded for standing for God. You might as well accept it. Yep. It's no That's different right. when I go on a mission trip. I don't care what country I go in. I'm branded because I'm an American. Period. Yep. It's automatic. You got money. Hey, t tell the skipper, they'll pull you over down there, the police will pull you over, and they don't want nothing but money. They will, they will go out of their way to get to you because they know you're an American, and you down there, you've got to have some money. It's not, you're branded. Yep. You're branded as a child of God. When you walk out this door, they see your car in the parking lot, or they see a, a faith baby sticker on the back of your car, or they see a shirt you're wearing, it don't matter. If they hear you testify, you are branded. You're right. So that's just part of it. Amen. So uh, every day this stuff is shoved down their throats all the time. That's an example to us about how the, these people live that God destroyed them. But I will tell you this, before God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, He got the righteous out. Amen. That's a perfect Amen. picture of the rapture that's going to take place. He's going to pull his people out before his judgment comes upon Amen. this land. So that's for all you to think we're living in the tribulation now. You're messed up nope. in the scriptures. Amen. That's, right. that's just the way it is. Those are examples. So God destroyed them because of that. He gave, gave us that example. So you send them off to school and college, then it's accepted by the world. It's even accepted, my friends, by the church. Mm. That's it. Not this one. Not good. But there's some churches in this county yes, sir. That's right. that will gladly accept those living defiant in that lifestyle of homosexuality. Yeah, but they'll be judged. And they'll, they'll say, it's okay, you are you a bigot. You shouldn't be talking. You shouldn't make a decision like that. I'm just saying what God's saying. I'm going to believe God and not you. Okay? That's just the way it is because i got to stand before God. It's kind of like that guy that called me and, and I knew his, his brother that died wanted me to preach his funeral. And he said, I, you know, his son called me and he said, uh, well, Uncle so-and-so says he don't mind if you preach his funeral, but you ain't going to give no invitation. I said, don't you tell your uncle or give me his number. I'll call him. Don't make no difference to me. I've got to stand before God, not your uncle. Right. Amen. So it's who we got to stand before. And so you, you see all this that takes place. It's even accepted by the church. It's accepted by Christians. This stuff warps the minds of your kids. So they see mom and daddy and God standing against it in one church, yet they hear these singing groups and these liberal churches that accept this. There's even churches that today they got a title of a church, but there's no way they can preach the whole counsel of God. They can't do that. They can only pull out bits and pieces. You cannot be in a homosexual relationship and pastor a church and go to a church that stands for that. 
You're just not a church, you're a cult. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's all Amen. you are. You're trying to justify things. You're grieving the Spirit of God. Amen. You say, how does all this apply? I think it don't take too much stretch to see that this applies to grieving the heart of God, to grieving the Spirit of God. Amen. So you tell them, don't accept this, and all these other people accept it. Instead of it, instead when they come home and say, it's just not that bad. Okay, and, and, and they see it, and, and you got all these television shows, Modern Family, and I could go on and name them and name them and name them. They pushing <coughs> racial relations, they pushing same-sex marriage, they pushing two daddies and two mamas. It's down our throat, it's where we're at today. There's no need backing up and, and trying to go around it, brother. It's where we are at. Right. And we might as well make a decision for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to stand for God. And that's all we got to do. And that's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And I know it's uncomfortable. I know we don't like to have to deal with the situations. But we are where we are. It is what it is. Amen. Right. Amen. So when they, they, they make a, a comment like that or something, it breaks your heart. It makes you make a choice you don't want to make. I tell my kids all the time, about issues like this and other things, I said, do not make me make that choice. Amen. Don't make me make that choice. It'll break your heart. Yep. I'm here to tell you. But there's going to come a time when their choices are going to make you make a choice. It's no different than what we do with God. Holy Spirit beats on our heart's door. He Amen. says, All don't time. you make that choice. All you make that choice, I'm going to have to make a choice. And that's exactly what yeah. God does. Music is another choice that, you know, and, and people, uh, you know, I've listened to songs, and there's even some Christian songs that I like the lyrics, but I can't stand the beat. And I'm speaking for myself and putting my old man, old foggy man in there. <laughs> Just where I am, I can't stand it. Amen. Why? I was saved out of that. That don't appeal to me, and I know it does to some. But on a choice of music, here's my thing on it, and I'm going to be done with it, and I'm going to move on, is can you see Jesus Christ on his throne accepting that, period? Do you think the 24 elders are around the throne? <laughs> and all this stuff. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> and all this stuff. Oh. It's holy, holy, holy. Okay? Alright. Amen. I made a monkey out of myself on that. <laughs> Socialism is used. Gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give That's where we're at in our life right today. There, it evolves and it not only evolves, but it comes down to the church. There are people in this church that are give me, give me, give me. I'm speaking to Faith Baptist Church today. On, I know this is going out live over the internet. Come they on, may be running. Y'all may be listening in Costa Rica and, and other people listening in other countries. I don't know. But I do know that people are living and we are breeding a give me, give me, give me society. Right. They say, I, you know, they see that and they know you worked hard for what you got. But they say, I deserve what you got after all. You are rich. We're branded all the time. The Bible says in verse 28, let him that labor, labor with his hands. Look at that. Let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor. Amen. Working with his hands, the thing which is good. God wants us to get out and work. You may not can find the job you want to do. I have shoveled yeah. ice off of a roof to put on shingles for ten dollars an hour. I've done that because I've had bills yep. I had to pay. I didn't want to get out there and shovel ice off of off some felt paper and risk falling off a two-story house to put on shingles that's cold and froze together, but I did for ten dollars an hour. Amen. I've worked for three dollars an hour mm -hmm. in my time. And we want fifteen dollars an hour to flip a cheeseburger. Yep. <laughs> Come on, I'm, 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 I'm getting too political this morning. That's just where we're at. It's not political, it's just the way it is. So, they think that, that you ought to come down 
and, and get assistance from the church. I, I, would, I would love for you to sit down with Miss Sylvia for one week and see the calls that come in. I would challenge you to get on the Benevolence Committee. Amen, brother. That I volunteered for four or five years ago, and I'm fortunate, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever you want to call it, still running that show here. I told him on the get-go, I said, you probably got the wrong one on this. I said, because I've worked for everything I've got. I ain't asked nobody for nothing. And there's times that uh, we go through some hard times. That's right. Amen. Hey, there's some stuff getting cut off today. It ain't the power. Okay. It's just a little television. Because I got some money coming in, but it ain't in now, so I ain't. I don't give a rip about the TV. Come on. I'll pay it as soon as I get some money, but I'm going to pay my power. I'm going to pay my uh, my mortgage. That's coming first. I'm taking. I'm getting groceries. So you got to just prioritize those right, things. Where you first? But you can't worry about those kind of things. So people will come here. They'll make a living off of the government giving them money. Yep. And then they will come in here and they will call churches. They'll get on the list and call, call, call. You would be amazed that's at the right. calls. Even from some people that's members here. That's right. I'm just speaking of faith this morning. I remember some calling and need money and we got a limit. It's three hundred dollars. Now if, if there's a need, brother, you better believe. You let that need known, the people of this church will, will rise up and they will help you. Amen. If there's a need there. Don't worry about it. I'm not asking you to, to don't, if you don't need, you don't have it because you don't ask. Amen. You don't have not because you ask not. That's just the scripture and it's real. But I remember time after time after time and I finally said, how many is in your house? And they give me the number. And I said, and four of y'all smoke. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm, I'm being on, real now. There you go. Give Get real. Two packs a day. Get real. Times four is eight packs a day. Times five dollars a pack is forty dollars a day. All right. Times thirty days is twelve hundred dollars. Come on, get real. You want us, your kids to have a place over their head? You want power on? You want food in there? Chunk them daggum cigarettes away. Amen. Then we will help some more. Amen. It's a choice you make. But people do that Amen. all the time. Here's what I'd like to implement. Now, I know it ain't going to go nowhere, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to be done, and I'm going to move on. Can you tell I love doing this? <laughs> I like it. Here's a simple, here's a simple method, and, and I think it ought to apply to anybody. If you can work, and you don't have a job, I understand that. But if you're physically able to work, you want to get $300 from the church, then you ought to come down here and work for $10 an hour you until you pay that $300 back. You ought to come Amen. down here and work 30 hours. Give them my hand up. You can, you hand can do it. That's right. No problem. There's grass that needs cutting. There's weeds that needs pulling. There's lights that needs changing. There's floors that need vacuuming. There's TVs that need to be cleaned. There's all kinds of stuff that needs Amen. to be done around here. You can come down and work instead of getting in your Lexus and going back home and draw on a check every month. Now I'm done. Amen. All right. Almost. <laughs> Psalm 37, 25. Now I want to just give you something here this morning. Psalm 37, 25. David said, I've been young and now I'm old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Friend, if you'll do it God's way, God will not forsake you. He will Amen. not forsake your seed, that is your children. Try him. And see how faithful he is. Amen. He says that. And then we see in Malachi 3, verse 7 through 11, and I wasn't going to turn that, but I'm going to go ahead and do it this morning because obviously I'm not going to get done with this verse anyway because <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going on to different ones. But Malachi 3, verse 7. Now, this is for all you that love to say that's Old Testament stuff. That's what we're getting on. We're talking about grieving here. Even from the days of your fathers, are you gone away from my ordinances? See, God has ordinances. God keeps them. And have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you. See the decision? He saith the Lord of hosts, but ye said, where shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yeah. Yet 
ye have robbed me, but you say, wherein have we robbed thee? What, what have I robbed you, God? He said in tithes and all. Amen. Amen. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Mm -hmm. Then he says, bring them all. Bring all your tithes in the storehouse, that they may be meat in my house, and prove me. <laughs> Now herewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open to you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be enough room to receive it. Amen. And what's this? I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. So all these people that say tithing is all the Old Testament stuff. <laughs> How would you like me to come and rob you every week? That's what I tell people. Amen. That say, I don't like it. I tie tired as Old Testament. We don't need it. What if every paycheck I showed up with a gun and robbed you? You'd come be on. tired of that after a while. Mm -hmm. There'd be some consequences for me. <laughs> yeah. All right, we do the same thing for the Lord. That tithe and stuff's Old Testament. That's not new. But the same person a shout when you read Psalms 37, 25 that we just read. That same person to shout and read Psalms 23. Oh, glory, that's for me. Uh-uh, that's Old Testament. It's not for you. Remember, you can't pick and pull out, pull out, pull out, pull out. You can't pick, tie it, and, and throw it in the trash can and say, Oh, but Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. You can't do all that stuff. No, you can't take Psalms 50 and verse 15. And call unto me in the day of trouble, and I will answer thee. They'll shout over Jeremiah 33.3. Won't Oh, yeah. Call unto me, and I'll answer thee. And show thee great and mighty things to come that thou knowest not. But they want to take out what they want to take out, but they want all the promises mm -hmm. that come along in the Old Testament. No, the Old Testament says either the Word of God or it's not. That's the bottom line. They'll claim Psalm 61. Verse 3, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from mine enemy. There's thousands of Old Testament promises in the Word of God. But these Christians I'm talking about, they want to claim all of them, but they tear out the scriptures that have to do with tithing. You can't have it both ways. That grieves the Holy Spirit of God. How about all the wisdom and stuff in Proverbs? You want to claim it, but you don't want to claim the rest of it. You are grieving the Spirit of God. Why? He is the author of the Old Testament. He is the author of the Amen. New Testament. Amen. You've got to understand that. You can grieve Him that way. Oh, mercy. Now, if we get back here in Ephesians 4, and we're going to be switching gears here for just a moment. You say, that was a pretty good rant there. Well, that's just what it is. I can't help it. What else grieves him? Verse 25 through 29. Right here in context. What else grieves the Spirit of God? i got just a couple of minutes. Wherefore put him away lying. Every man the truth with his neighbor. For well, members one another. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that steal, steal no more. But rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good. That he may give to him that needeth. And that no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Unto the hearers. Let all bitterness, verse 31, and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. All these things grieve the Spirit of God, and they're easy to be come up in us. So the, the thing here in verse 31, let, that means essentially to take upon oneself and to carry up what has been raised up. In other words, God has showed you all of this. That means you take it up and then you apply it to your life. So it's interesting to know that let and to be put away in that same verse in verse 31 comes from the same Greek word. So put away, pick it up, take it off, put it away, all bitterness. That's bitter hatred. Wrath, that's fierce anger, anger, punishment, of vengeance, clamor, and outcry, a tumult, a grief, and crying. Or oh, in other words, what we would call a temper tantrum. Yeah. <laughs> oh, mercy, I can stay right here a little bit. <laughs> Grown men and women can act like a 
bunch of four-year-olds, mm -hmm. demon on, and man. a child in the house of God. I've seen it. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> I could give you some examples, but there's no need in digging up those bones, all right? <laughs> Evil speaking, blaspheming, evil speaking. And along with that malice, that means the badness and depravity and wickedness. Verse 32 says, and be you kind. Come on. I'm trying to be. But that's what he tells us to do. Be you kind, useful, fit for use, manageable. See, all this, I took a week off, man. I ain't got so much going on in here. <laughs> One to another, tenderhearted. It means compassionate, sympathetic. In other words, consider one another the same. It could be you one day on the other end. That's right. Forgiving one another. That means to grant us a favor, to be gracious, to be pardoned, to grant a pardon. Even as, or according to, since you see how that... God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Simple words this morning, but grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Father, we thank you for this little bit of tidbit this morning from your word. God, would you bless this hour as we come to worship you in Jesus' name. Amen.